is manpower planning the need of the hour? We knew it before you walked in the door. You all knew it before you walked in the door. We're building lots of hotels in India. India needs lots of hotels. We're going to need lots of good people to run those hotels. And it is going to be a massive challenge to find those people. It's going to be a massive challenge to keep those people, to train those people and to keep those people. In Marit's opinion, and my opinion, the key to this issue lies in engagement. It's not necessarily easy, but it's something which can be, which specific actions can be put in place in order to drive your associates' engagement. The engagement itself is measurable, so you can see whether you're making progress, whether you're heading in the right direction. And uh, I've tried to share with you a little bit about the way we at Marriott go about uh, trying to ensure that we remain the leaders in terms of engagement with our associates. It's been a pleasure. I hope uh, if anybody has any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them to the best of my ability. So. Thank you very much, Mr. Nambia. Uh, your company and you as a GM definitely uh, need to Morning, sir. Uh, your company and you certainly deserve kudos <laughs> for your successful employee management. Say one moment, sir. I don't think the mic is. Thank you. Um, what I want to ask is this. It's so wonderful to see once you have the people in the door, you engage them. You ensure that the productivity goes up. You ensure that every parameter that you are measured with is done well. Wonderful. How can we take this beyond the door, even before they come in? What's your company's contribution to engaging with the younger aspirational youth at the school level and at the institution level so that your engagement begins not when he comes into the door, but before? Is there any approach at all by your company in this country and to what extent the Indian hotel industry as an association, as a body, can really rewrite the rules of getting the best bright minds and the kind of kids that want to come into this field are cultivated at the school level itself. Could you, could you share something? It's a obviously incredibly important aspect. Um, and I'm probably not qualified to answer it completely. I can only answer it in, in elements. Uh, so what, what are my obligations uh, from a company point of view? Uh, my leadership team, and myself included, has to uh, deliver a lecture, if you like, a guest lecture, or, or engage with the local hospitality colleges. Uh, a certain number of times a year. Arthur, you might be able to help me. I think it's seven or ten times a year. Again, it's one of the measurables that we have. It's one of the report outs that we do on a monthly basis. Have we achieved this metric? Uh, I'm sure we could do more, should and could do more. It's something which I've always really thoroughly enjoyed doing. Uh, we obviously run management traineeship programs similar to a lot of other, other organisations and we have relationships with some of the colleges around the country. Could we do more? No doubt. Could industry more, do more? No doubt. Uh, I don't know that I'm particularly qualified to, to answer that from an industry perspective. I think that still today, when I meet young people who are potentially um, considering jobs in the industry, there is still a certain stigma which is at uh, attached to working in the industry. Um, there's still a belief that perhaps people won't be treated well uh, when they're working in our industry. A lot of parents have app apprehensions that, that I've come across over the seven years that I've been here in India. So I think if one of the key things we can do is to improve our associate engagement, right? The, <clears throat> perhaps the biggest source of associates that we have in my hotel is other associates. They've all gone to the same colleges, they've all gone to the same schools. And it's arguably the most effective recruitment tool that we have is our own pool of staff. Now, if our pool of staff is saying it's a terrible place to work, 
then their network is not going to come and work for us. But I hope and assume that enough of them are saying that it's a great place to work and, and hence it's our, our biggest source of recruitment. Sending a bus to a college somewhere and making a pitch and bringing 30 people from that college is marginally effective. Right. Um, so uh, another key aspect is, is, what is the onboarding process. I mean, the person that walks in the door, he's most or she is most vulnerable in that first three to six months. That's when the highest attrition happens, soon after they join the organisation. People who have been with the organisation for three, four and five years are much less likely to leave the organisation. So the quality of the process that you have in place to ensure that a person's entry into the organisation is strong, it's, it's humane, it's clear what's expected of them. They're given that insight, not just into what their job role will be, but also what is the vision of the organisation? What is the vision of the general manager of the organisation? Uh, especially with younger folks who are joining us, those elements are so important to them. So that onboarding process is another critical factor. Uh, in ensuring you don't lose them in the first three months. So I don't think I'm giving you a fantastic answer into what more we can do to bring them in the door. Um, but I, I do believe that, that you know, the fact that our associates are engaged really helps us when it comes to recruitment. Ma'am? Hi. Can I? Ladies <laughs> I just want to add to this. Uh, I think I, I don't know whether you're aware, but Marriott's Pune. I'm from the academics, and we have a training program with the Marriott's as a partner going on, which is called uh, Liquid Chefs Program, where our students go to Marriott's and they're trained by Marriott's over a period of time, maybe about eight months or so. We have a similar tie-up with ISTA. We're working on it. Although I don't know now with ISTA going to Hayat, I, I really don't know what's going to happen to that. But a lot of hotels are coming forward to have such kind of tie-ups. We would, of course, want a greater contribution than just this, but it's, it's a start. So I think it's a great start. And Marriott's is probably one of the leaders in this. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. The, there's one more program which I, I should also highlight. It's called the SAIL Traineeship Program. It's where we take school kids from uh, backgrounds with perhaps they couldn't afford to go to university and they're enrolled in the uh, Indira Gandhi Open University uh, on a three-year course where we pay for that uh, and we pay them to work in the hotel and they're given time to complete their study. So at the end of the three-year process they've got very useful practical experience, they get a university degree, they've been paid to train uh, and it, it, I guess it really makes a difference because they are not associates who would otherwise perhaps be uh, able to, to get that university degree which makes such a difference. And it was a program which was uh, first tested here in Goa. It was before my time so I can't claim credit. But it's now been rolled out across the country and all of our hotels are aiming to do this. One terribly sad thing though is that this year when we went to recruit we only had one person who was interested. Hi. My name is Rajan Vakelchikar. I'm from Pune. I have two questions for you. Uh, one, first one is the training that you do, uh, all the t steps that you take uh, in order to train the employees. The observation of the hotel fraternity in India is the standards of services across the board in all the hotels are lowering. It's only that we must accept the fact. <laughs> yes, it is true. Question is, has that happened to Marriott? This is the first question. Second thing is, there is something called guest satisfaction index. I do not know whether you have that concept. When you drop your number of employees from 600 to 400, did that affect an honest answer if I would appreciate? Thank you. Well, I, I can't talk in general terms. I can talk only about my hotel. My guest satisfaction index has dropped by half of one point so far this year compared to last year. That's my honest answer. <laughs> Um, yes, we live and die by the guest satisfaction survey, and it's a completely valid point. Uh, if I take perhaps my Marriott hat off for a moment and put my Pavithran hat on, when you go to a hotel in New York or a hotel in Sydney, what are the service levels that we expect? And 
we all know that it's not the same as the service levels that we expect in an Indian hotel. And why is that? One school of thought, which is valid, is that India is particularly good at hospitality. And it's true. Another element to that is the fact that we have 600 associates in the hotel and in the same American hotel you'll have 100 associates or 150 associates. So the quantity of the service that's delivered by 600 associates, assuming they're working hard, is going to be more. Quality is a different story. Quantity, definitely. Inevitably, there's going to be a re-education process that's required. Because we, we understand and adapt to the service levels that we receive when we go to other parts of the world. And our expectations of service in an Indian hotel are different, and that's fair enough because that's what we've received over the years. This is the hospitality industry. Right? Why are we here? We are here to make money. This is not the hospitality, let's be nice to people. How we make money, obviously, is by delivering fantastic service. But when fantastic service comes at a cost where it prevents us from making money, we have to examine that. And as an industry, we are going to have to examine that and it's going to be an incredibly painful, difficult transition. We're going to have to bring our customers along with that. And it is going to be a challenge. There's no point pretending otherwise. We can't bury our head in the sand and say, or we can choose to bury our head in the sand and say, no, we're going to continue to have 600 staff. But the organisations who successfully make this transition are the ones who are going to be successful organisations in 20 years' time. The organisations who say, no, 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 we have to have 600 staff, we have to have this level of service, my hypothesis, will either not be here at all or certainly will not be successful in 20 years' time. Change is inevitable. Right? And, and we need to adapt to that change. We need to ride that wave rather than be crushed by it. Um, so it's, it's a fantastic question that you're asking, sir. I don't know that I've... That means you are giving priorities for dropping the number of staff in your hotel than the guest satisfaction. That's not the... That's for not you, the numbers, the executive proves that I've dropped the number of staff in my hotel, but in fact, your services have gone bad. That, that's your word, sir, not mine. Um, I'm not saying that. that you said your best satisfaction interest has gone down. I don't know that that's because the number of staff has. I said, coincidentally with the fact that the number of staff have gone down, my guest satisfaction has gone down by half a percent. It's not necessarily correlated, but there could well be a correlation. I don't, I don't, take away, I'm not, I don't disagree with your point. Marriott and no other hospitality company is going to say or believe that we are going to sacrifice service at the expense of, uh, on the altar of profit. But nor are we going to stop making profit. Nor is any of the companies that's sitting in this room going to accept that we stop making profit in order to continue to deliver the same level of service. It's not realistic. It's not sensible. No other industry in the world has done it. The hospitality industry and the rest of the world has not taken that decision. And we can't make that decision. We can choose to stick our heads in the sand and say, I insist on 600 staff. But we want to give our associates, I want to give my associates a 15% pay rise every year. That's my commitment to myself and to them. How am I going to pay for that? If I own the hotel and the manager of that hotel says, today your payroll cost is 20% of your turnover, tomorrow it's 22%, the next day it's 24%, the next day it's 26%, and the next day it's 35%, that's not a good manager, is it? Again, this is the hospitality industry we are here to make money. Service is critical to that. Product is critical to that. In Marriott, we have what's called the balanced scorecard approach. I am not considered a good general manager if I deliver profit alone. I'm not considered a good general manager if I deliver guest service alone. I'm not considered a good general manager if I deliver a high associate engagement alone. I'm only considered a good general manager if I deliver all three of those things against preset targets the balanced scorecard approach. The only way that I can get my full bonus, which I'm fairly committed to, <laughs> is by delivering on all of those metrics. And so they have to be balanced. So your point is 100% valid, and it's a huge challenge that we're going to face in this industry. Thank you. Thank you.